China is once again about to attempt the launch of a commercial liquid-filled rocket. This may sound insignificant, but it's actually a very big deal in a country where launch has historically almost always been provided by state-owned enterprises. The company that's planning to break this status quo is called Tianbin Kechi, also known as Space Pioneer, with a rocket called the Tianlong-2. So what is any of this about? Space Pioneer was founded in Beijing in April 2019 by a guy called Kang Yong Lai, who held pretty high-level positions at China's state-owned rocket manufacturer, Calt, but then left in the mid-2010s to join the private sector. He first started out by joining the startup Landspace as CTO, but shortly after, for reasons that we don't really know, he decided to leave and founded his own launch company, Space Pioneer. Space Pioneer is developing the Tianlong series of rockets, among which you have the one that they're planning to launch in the coming weeks, the Tianlong-2. The Tianlong-2 is a three-stage rocket with a total height of 35 meters and a diameter of 3.35 meters. With a liftoff thrust of 190 tons, it is capable of putting two tons of payload into low Earth orbit, putting it into the category of medium lift launch vehicles. Now let's look at the engines because this is where things get interesting. The first stage is composed of three YF-102 engines, which is quite unusual for a commercial launch company considering that these engines are provided by the state-owned company Cask, rather than a commercial manufacturer like Jojo and Jen or Aerospace Propulsion, which is probably what most people were expecting. The YF-102 engine is a gas generator cycle, Kerlox fueled engine producing 85 tons of thrust, and it was revealed by Cask for the first time at the 2021 Zhuhai Air Show. And I remember at the time, no one had any idea what this engine was being developed for, although it was already said at the time that this engine was being developed for the commercial market. Now back to the Tianlong-2. The second stage uses the in-house developed Tianhua 11 engine, while the third stage uses the Tianhua 31. The former is this 30-ton thrust, oxygen-rich stage combustion cycle Kerlox engine, while the latter is an upper stage engine burning a hypergolic mix of nitrogen tetroxide and monomethyl hydrazine. Naturally, one of the very big questions about this rocket is, is it reusable? Animations of the Tianlong-2 often show the rocket landing vertically using grid fins, similar to a SpaceX Falcon 9. But when we look at actual pictures of the Tianlong-2 for this month, we see no grid fins. And considering that the rocket uses three YF-102 engines on the first stage, it's probably not reusable with this current configuration. However, there are rumors that the company will modify the first stage architecture in the future to use seven Tianhu 11s instead. And this is a configuration that's much more suited for reusability, considering that the Tianhu 11 is actually designed to be restarted multiple times, and its thrust can be throttled down to 50%. So in a nutshell, this rocket is not reusable today, but it could be in the future. And finally, one very unique feature with Space Pioneer's Tianlong rockets is that they don't need to launch from a dedicated launch site. The company claims that the rocket can just deploy on any flat concrete surface, and then there would be tanker trucks that would drive in to provide liquid oxygen and kerosene. One of the main reasons to do this, according to Space Pioneer, is to reduce cost and complexity. And I remember it back in 2020, the company was heard criticizing their fellow domestic competitor, Landspace, for the costs of their dedicated launch pad in Zhou Tren, quoted at the time to have cost over 1 billion Chinese yuan. So what should we make of the company Space Pioneer? Well, if they succeed, they will enter history as the first Chinese commercial launch company to successfully launch a liquid-filled rocket, and this could pave the way for an increased cadence of deployment for Chinese constellations. But if they fail, we're once again in the guessing game of who will succeed first among the list of Chinese commercial launch companies getting really close to the finish line, among which we have Landspace with the Jutra 2, but also iSpace with Hyperbola 2, Galactic Energy with their Palace 1, and Deep Blue Aerospace with their Nebula 1. So who do you think will succeed as China's first liquid field commercial launch vehicle? Let me know in the comments. I'm actually really curious to know what everybody thinks. And as always, I just want to say a special thank you to my Patreon supporters for making this video possible. Also, do check out our Dongfang Hour merch store. We just launched this month a very cool series of Mars-themed products. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.